What's up guys, it's Crash, and I missed an important week to be gone for a work trip last week. So much stuff happened. What I wanted to do was make a video talking about three of the main things that we took away from this week, my reactions to it, and then please guys, comment down below with what you thought of everything. What I wanna talk about today is everything that went on over the last week with Battlefield, what we learned about Modern Warfare Roman numeral two, and Escape from Tarkov. There is so much to talk about with first person shooters. With that in mind, the episode tomorrow night around 5.30, p.m. central time of the scope episode 22 it's going to be chonky it's going to be a big episode i'm going to sit down with buff nerd the modern warfare 2 weapons expert and we have a lot to discuss we'll be live over here uh tomorrow night then the vod will be up on the scope youtube channel as well it's going to be crazy it's going to be fun i'm really looking forward to it but i just kind of wanted to react to this week and what a week it was we kind of had the e3 uh, the post E3 era with Summer Game Fest, the Xbox Bethesda showcase was today, and then Tarkov TV kind of did their own thing. And I'm I'm looking at this from the aspect of first person shooters. I know there were a ton of other games, but over here we talk about FPS news. Also, if you like FPS news, you can you can hit the subscribe button if you want to, and also hit the like to stay tuned for more of that, because that's what we're gonna be doing on this channel. Anyway. I need to shut up and talk about Battlefield. So what's going on with Battlefield? We received season one and as per usual, as we're used to, a definite rocky start. It had server issues. Even when I tried to log in and play it for the first time yesterday, I kept getting this error. I couldn't get into the game for a while. Finally did and played it. And honestly, um, I think I share the sentiment of everyone. The map is really good. It feels great. Uh, definitely commend them on that. But at the end of the day, it's still one map. I still don't enjoy specialist gameplay. And it ran really rough for me uh, with a 3090. Um, I was barely over 60 frames. It definitely dipped below that sometimes. I had a lot of hit reg issues. I still have all the stuttering issues and stuff. I'm going to try to reinstall it or something to make it play better, but it still doesn't feel good to play for me. Anyway, I know a lot of you guys are having fun with it. Let me know what you think of the map down below, but it, it, it still feels a little bit rough to me. It doesn't feel like a battlefield game. The movement feels like floating. I have a lot of input lag. The mouse doesn't feel right. It, it just doesn't it doesn't like my system very well um but overall the map looks great but i just don't want us um as a player base to get used to and get conditioned to accept one map for a season in a dlc uh it, it's insane to me there's no new portal map there are two new weapons one of which is a crossbow so there's essentially one new firearm to use which is actually insane and i don't want us to lose sight of that i don't want us to be happy with that and get used to less and less content because pretty soon we won't get any content for the same price so less content for the same money um it's just not consumer friendly and not something that i want to get used to but dice did a great job with this map let's be perfectly clear and honest with that i think the map plays plays pretty good it's pretty fun it has a lot of stuff to it the visuals are actually really cool i the visuals are still a little rough to me like the the edges and stuff on this new frostbite engine still look a little blurry and some aliasing and stuff but the overall color palette is really nice uh the map looks aesthetically pleasing and uh it didn't play too bad um i overall enjoyed how the map played out aside from all the bugs that i'm still having i know a lot of you guys aren't and console players are doing even better than i am even better than pc and it's playing pretty well so that's a good sign for battlefield and honestly in a nutshell guys this gives me more hope for the next battlefield than it does this battlefield if that makes sense i like the way they went with these maps it feels like it was designed for a battlefield not a battle royale and it makes me think that they're finally listening and understanding what we want for maps and i don't think for me anyway 2042 is going to be saved there's still a lot of core gameplay design decisions that i really don't like and don't fit in battlefield in my opinion but like i said again this gives me hope for maybe the next battlefield battlefield 7 yeah pre-order away guys anyway the next thing i wanted to talk about was tarkov so something going along with tarkov and then we're going to go on to modern warfare 2 there is a lot coming to tarkov arena is coming i think it's going to be a big deal testing this fall and then releasing whenever they feel good with it uh three to five maps actually five to six maps eventually is what they want to release with when it's ready to go to public um there's just a lot of stuff around arena that could be really cool tarkov has one of a kind weapon mechanics it could make it more accessible for people that don't want to learn about loot and survival to play that um i think 
think if they do like a CSGO type, buy your weapons and stuff in between rounds, bomb diffuse type mode, it could be really fun and it could change the game and really appeal to the Valorant CSGO Rainbow Six style crowd. And then you have the, the MMO kind of aspect of regular escape from Tarkov. So they're doing big things with Tarkov. I'm extremely excited for Arena. I think that's gonna be uh, right up my alley. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming with this next wipe. Uh, it's gonna be uh, whenever they get it done. So probably toward sometime this summer for sure. The next big update is going to have that with new clothes, new voice lines, new weapons with the G36 family, uh, an RD704 AK. Just a ton of stuff is coming to Tarkov. Lighthouse expansion, new clothes, new voice lines, uh, flares to call an airdrop, scavs quests. They reworked night vision, uh, movement animation fixes. Uh, there's going to be custom games, um, co-op offline, uh, just so much stuff. They're, they're, I think they're talking about where you can do like wager matches in arena, or maybe you can bet rubles and stuff and try to beat people and earn rubles. So I think that could be a lot of fun. But anyway, Tarkov has so much stuff coming down the pipeline. I'm really getting excited again uh, for Escape from Tarkov. That's kind of how it goes. Uh, hopefully after this, the next big thing we get is Streets of Tarkov. There's still a lot of maps open world in-game traders the vision is massive for tarkov it's a one-of-a-kind game and i definitely look forward to where it where it's going in the tarkov tv episode i don't want to get people's hopes up uh but the guy in the background was actually messing around with the playstation controller hinting about console probably not but they could just be messing with us. That's what they do over at Battle State Games. And then lastly, what I wanted to talk about was react to Modern Warfare 2's trailer. I don't know what you guys thought. Please let me know down below what you thought of the Modern Warfare 2 trailer. Honestly, I was pretty, pretty disappointed in the trailer. I didn't think it did. It didn't do a lot for me. It almost looked like a Modern Warfare 2019 trailer. I wasn't that impressed with the, I think it was the animations that I really didn't like. They felt kind of uh, rudimentary and unfinished. Uh, I feel like those could have been polished up. Uh, the trailer was just honestly lackluster. It didn't show me a lot. Um, I saw that was kind of the sentiment shared from a lot of people that it wasn't. But as we learned from Battlefield 2042, trailers don't necessarily reflect what the game gets and to me personally i was a lot more excited about the details that came from this last week than i was the actual trailer itself again the trailer was pretty lackluster um, but the game is focusing around single player multiplayer and co-op um, actually steam databases showed that it was <laughs> the number three most sold game of last week which is already picking up steam with pre-orders i think the game is going to be really big they made a lot of movement improvements where you can dive ledge hang and still shoot you can hang off helicopters and shoot with a pistol uh the gunsmith attachments sound really cool where they're grouping weapons into platform categories where you can tune and tweak attachments like your barrel to make it fit how you want to uh basically just taking the gunsmith to the next level which i think is really really good it sounds like they're also going to kind of take another shot at battlefield with a lot of vehicles uh vehicle mechanics and also uh ground war is supposed to be coming back even larger scale with weapons weapon husks they work more there's more destruction with weapons where you know what i mean by weapon husks when they get blown up they're still there for cover uh there's going to be new boats and and water vehicles large maps will be there for ground war with a lot of detail meaning that you can go in all the buildings all the rooms and stuff like that so again sounds like modern warfare is taking another shot at trying to call a duty or excuse me uh, trying to battlefield um then with the 6v6 maps are going to be across the globe their warzone 2 map was teased um they're really focused on ai i have yet to see really good ai in a shooting game uh tarkov scavs are pretty rough all the ones in call of duty so far are pretty rough but they say they they claim that allegedly they'd make a lot of movement uh, and and uh, iterations of better AI with more stuff that they can do. They look more natural, they react better and stuff like that. So we'll see. They added a lot of stuff, almost that makes me think of Rainbow Six Siege with a drill charge like Fuse, a tactical camera like the bulletproof camera from Siege and an EMP charge to take down a vehicle, a remote decoy like the alibi operator from Siege. So a lot of stuff from that, making it a little bit more tactical. 
I'm honestly really excited for the prisoner rescue mode. It sounds like hostage from Rainbow Six Siege. If you guys have followed me for a while, you know I still enjoy to play Rainbow Six Siege from time to time. It's a really cool game. And having a slowed down tactical game with some of those things that help keep campers away, uh, like the cluster charge and stuff like that, I think it helped combat campers. I really do believe that uh, that if prisoner rescue mode is done correctly, it could be a lot of fun and kind of a more accessible siege. Siege is a really cool game at its core with a lot of tension and a lot of competitiveness, but sometimes just how those operators interact and the soft destruction of the maps makes it really hard, really difficult to grasp and understand and jump into. This could be a more accessible version of that. And I think that is really exciting uh, concept. Tons and tons of guns, uh, graphics and sounds are supposed to be better. Of course, again, the trailer didn't really impress me and animations are said to be better, but again, I didn't see that in the trailer. And then the unified engine across studios was the next big thing. So there's also a lot of other stuff we heard about. We saw some gameplay from a game I've been looking forward to called Witchfire, which looks like a first person shooter Elden Ring. Uh, we saw some more stuff today uh, from Redfall and also Starfield sounds absolutely massive. So let me know what you guys think of any of these. It says, I think they said in Starfield, there's like a thousand planets, full size planets you can go check out. It sounds incredibly ambitious which also makes me worry. As far as Starfield, I am hoping for an Elden Ring type game and not a cyberpunk game, if you know what I mean. But anyway, guys, that's essentially a rundown of all the stuff that I thought was important with a little bit of reaction sprinkled in over next week. A ton of information was given out about a lot of games. We're gonna discuss that with the weapon expert, Buff Nerd Gaming, tomorrow, 5.30 Central Time, PM right here on this channel on Scope episode 22. I hope to see you there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Have a good one.